There's a light in the sky Rising in the air There's a feeling so strong It's time to light the fire Like a bright shining Uh, hello, welcome to the House of Wellness. My name's Luke Darcy. It is brilliant to be here with Joe Stanley, Rachel Finch and Luke Hines. Hello, Hi, guys. Hey. Hey, hey. hey, today we've got a packed show which has a bit of a focus on family, Joe. Not the easiest job bringing up kids. Hmm. You find you revert to all the stuff that was said to you by your own parents. Do you find that, Joe? Oh, I'm... my gosh, it's so bad when that happens. My mum used to say to us when we were teenagers, I talk to the wall <laughs> and we roll our eyes and go, good on you, mum. And now I say it to my You're daughter talking to the time. wall. Oh, I told to the walls. Oh. We've got almost all bases covered, uh, Rach. We've got, uh, I've got a 15-year-old, my eldest, uh, of four. Mm. Willow is 10 mm -hmm. and Dom's three, I think. Uh, yeah, it? Violet's five and Dom's two. Yep. Uh, so we definitely have all bases covered. It is the hardest job in the world. It's a constant juggling act. Oof. And I travel a lot for my work. You know, I'm just... I'm away, and so Misha has to step in, and I always say to people, if he had boobs, he'd be breastfeeding. Too. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he good pecs, though. He is, <laughs> he's so good. He's an all-rounder. And so, you yeah. travel with the kids a lot, so Violet's often with you on your trips away. How does yeah. she go? Yeah, she's great. She really blends in well, and I love her getting used to that flexibility mm. and getting used to different environments, mm -hmm. which is really important for me. Yep, today we're meeting some parents who make me look fairly ordinary, it's fair to say, <laughs> do an incredible job uh, on the home front for their communities, including a hands-on dad, a woman who's found a unique way of communicating with kids with autism. Looking forward to that story. And Joe, you've got a really special one for us with a couple of brand new parents. Oh, yes. No, so being pregnant and having Willow was an amazing experience for me. It brought me the greatest joy ever, along with a fair bit of stress mm. and worry in the lead-up. And that's true for any expectant parent, even when the pregnancy goes perfectly, but almost one in ten expectant mums are hit with the shock of their bub arriving early. I came into hospital for my normal appointment in December and I was normal work for working full time, felt fine, was not sick, felt unwell at all and then I that day got diagnosed with severe preeclampsia. Just six months into her pregnancy, first time mum Jess was completely unprepared for the emergency birth of her baby Millie very scary. I didn't know what she was actually going to look like because I've never seen a preemie baby before and I don't know anyone that's had, when I say preemie, they're generally, you know, in the 30 weeks, not under, under 30. So it was very scary for my husband and I. We didn't really know what to expect. Millie came into the world at 25 weeks, well short of the full term at 40 weeks. She was born at 600 grams, so we like to say a size of a Coke bottle, but she's now over five kilos. Her lungs are improving. She was born with chronic lung disease. She still has it. So the next couple of years for us, we're not sure how that's going to go with her lungs and she'll be coming home on home oxygen. Oh, she's gone to sleep. While every day has its challenges, it's the ongoing care and support of the nursing team that's helped Jess and her family through such an emotional ordeal. You know, it was touch and go and didn't know if she was actually going to make it to start with, but now she is. She's going to come home. Um, it was very scary and daunting, but the staff make you feel comfortable and very supportive. We're dealing with families that they're at their most vulnerable and um, it's really nice to support not only their beautiful babies, but get these families off in the right foot. You know, we support them as best as we can and get them involved in their baby's care from the get-go. Specialist care nurse Arnie is on the front line of the neonatal unit of the Royal Women's Hospital in Melbourne. Do you guys want like cuddle or anything? Yeah, I was going to. We have babies here for um, as little as a couple of hours to a couple of days, but as long as weeks, months and up to a year, and you really do, you become friends with the family and really get involved. And you're here for their milestones. Um, you're here for them when they're their most, most um, distressing and harrowing, but you're also here for the really fun times, like your first wait, your first bath, and the first time their baby comes off respiratory support, and being a part of that and being allowed or privileged to, to be with these families is, is, is really such a blessing. Happy? Is her head OK? Her head's fine. Jacinta and Billy were experiencing a normal pregnancy. They had no warning signs that anything might be wrong until Jacinta went into early labour. We were phoned to the Royal Women's Hospital here in Melbourne from Warrnambool um, and she arrived 50 minutes after we got here. After an emergency dash by Chopper three months ago, 
baby Lara was born at just 24 weeks, a tiny 735 grams. Nervous, scared, worried. Um, didn't really know what to expect, you know, her being 24 plus four, so it's quite early for such a, a small little child to come out. <laughs> because Lara was so small and fragile, until recently, Billy and Jacinta couldn't do all the normal things that come with being new parents. Are you okay? Yeah. Bath her, change her nappy, change her clothes, get her out for a cuddle. So we can do most things, obviously not the medical it's stuff. But especially yeah. moving to this room, like this is a special care room. A high dependency, oh, high de yeah. high dependency room. So we do get to do a lot more stuff, like we will let the nurse know, like, I, yeah, we're just going to get her out now for a cuddle and, you know, we'll help each other as a team sort of thing. For babies like Lara and Millie, where every day is a fight, it takes such a tremendous toll. So to see them blossom and grow is the greatest gift. She's very sassy. She squawks when she doesn't like something and she tells you she's got personality. And they say that she gets it from me, so. <laughs> and she can be stubborn too, hey? But at the end of the day, she's getting healthier and that's all we want, so. The thing I'm looking forward to most is to sit on the couch at night with my two girls, like, you know, my partner and my daughter. That's, I just can't wait for that moment. That is heartbreaking. Oh, those it's... parents and those bubbas yep. are just miracles. And you think how tough it is for those parents, you know. Apart from the emotional strain of all of that, they don't get to take their babies home. And not on that scale. I actually was preemie myself and lived in a humidity crib for quite a number of weeks. And wow. my mum has always said how hard it was not touching me. That yeah, was that's absolutely the you know, straight after birth, that skin to skin, that just the ability to pick them up mm. straight after is just priceless. Yes, and for Jess, you know, she goes to hospital every morning, spends all day caring for Millie, and then get, goes home at six o'clock, and then the next day starts all over mm. again. And that's their life until she gets to take baby Millie home so but how beautiful to see those babies mm. doing so well thriving yeah. and yep. the care in with the professionals in the neonatal unit is just phenomenal and Arnie said it right you know they're there for the milestones and they're there for the challenges they're supportive throughout mm. the whole process so absolutely beautiful well baby Millie at the time of that story had just celebrated 143 days so definitely their lives are intertwined with those nursing staff and they get to celebrate so much when she eventually goes home. Yeah, what a great story, uh, Joe. Very emotional one. As part of the miracle month of May, we'll be meeting just one of the incredible medicos who helps care for these tiny babies and how to look after them. That's coming up next on the House of Wellness. <laughs> Welcome back. We just got to know two families whose babies arrived way earlier than expected, but helping parents and their new arrivals get through is intensive care neonatal specialist at the Royal Women's Hospital, Dr Louise Owen. Louise, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, what an incredible job you do, and uh, you've worked in this field for 14 years. What part do you play in the neonatal ward? I'm just one part of a, of a huge team, really, who looks after all these tiny babies that we have in the, in the unit. We have almost 2,000 babies a year. So I'm part of the medical team, but we have nursing and social work and psychologists and physiotherapists and everyone who's there to look after the babies and their whole families. Oh, it's such a massive job. And these babies, we just saw two that were born at 25 weeks, which is incredibly early. But what, at what age is specified premature? So any baby before, born before 37 weeks of pregnancy mm -hmm. is premature. But as alluded to in the, in the film, we saw that it's very different to be born just a little bit premature compared mm. with what we describe as extremely premature, which is what those two babies were. And what sorts of challenges do they face? Well, as those mothers both described, um, the initial problem really is breathing. Mm -hmm. All the baby's organs will be immature, and particularly the lungs. So they need help right from the moment of birth to start to breathe and to continue to breathe, and for many weeks and months and beyond discharge home. And ongoingly, I mean, this strapping young man. That's why I'm so early to work, is because I was premier. He seems to be doing all right now, but as those children grow, are they facing ongoing issues? Um, potentially. It depends how early they were born, mm. what, what um, experiences they picked up along the way, and how, how severe their lung diseases they go. So a few babies will need to go home on home oxygen, um, and those babies may have issues going 
going forwards in the first year or two of life. Louise, both families that we got to know had no warning signs for the birth. Is this preventable or can it be minimised in any way? Uh, premature birth has got a range of different um, you know, there's a range of different reasons why it can be preterm. Sometimes mothers know there's been some complication in the pregnancy or the mother's got an, an illness which we can we, we can manage and we can yeah. help to delay the birth as long as possible but not always and mm. they're still... So we saw in that package with baby Millie that there was some issues four months on mm. and that they could expect some complications mm. for up to two years. What does the future look like in those circumstances? Well, we know that, um, particularly for breathing, your lungs continue to develop well into childhood, so we expect her breathing uh, problems to get less prominent through childhood. Yeah. Um, what we don't know is, because, because neonatology is quite a new speciality, is what the future holds into old age for those, for those children. Yeah. We expect them to have relatively normal lungs as young adults, probably mm -hmm. as middle-aged adults, but we don't know yet what happens to them in older age. Yeah. Because, Louise, this is relatively new to be able to save babies at such a young, 25 weeks. Um, what has changed over the years as far as um, the kind of care for these I think premature it's, babies? It's changed enormously. As mm -hmm. I said, it, we're quite a young specialty. Mm -hmm. In the 1960s, most of these babies, we didn't even try to resuscitate them and only about 10% of them would have survived. Now we have lots of intensive care facilities, the philosophies change quite a lot and nearer to 75% of them will eventually go home, even the most tiny babies. And the, and the care and the worry doesn't just end when the families leave the hospital. Mm. What's involved after that? Well, as you said, the care and the worry is acute early on, but it doesn't go away. Suddenly people who've been protected in this hospital environment are, are let loose and suddenly they carry the whole mm. responsibility. But so, the support, yeah, yeah moving forward with, with the team, yeah. you know, you're working with, with the families a lot. That's right. So we try to, tra to hand over to maternal child health nurses. Yep. We have a hospital in the home team that transition from the hospital right. to the home. Mm. The families come back to us regularly to, for, the, for us to look at the development and the growth of the babies to see if they need any extra support. It can be a bit of a difficult topic to broach, maybe with a family member, what's the best thing that family and friends can do to support someone going through this? I think um, asking what can be done outside. Sometimes it's very difficult for families to continually have to update everybody about what happens. We mm. sometimes say to families, tell one or two people, ask them to disseminate it. Mm. Can they take off the load of other things, household, yeah. uh, other childcare, cooking and shopping, the things, yeah, the things that you don't have time to do when your whole focus is on this little tiny person and providing for them in hospital. Such a big life shift. Mm. Yeah, we know many women in Victoria could not have had a successful pregnancy without medical and technological interventions and the help of the incredible carers like uh, Louise here. Uh, you can make a miracle happen by donating to the Miracle Mums Appeal. You can find all the details on how to donate on the houseofwellness.com.au website. Louise, thanks so much for taking the time to come in this morning. Thank you for having me. new parents need extra love and support especially mums to be it's a time when taking care of your health becomes top priority and Gerald from a nutritional point of view what can expected mums take to ensure that they are getting all those nutrients it's very important we understand uh, Rachel that nutrition is very important and the thing that probably is initially most important is folic acid or folate mm. and that's given to uh, in pre-pregnancy a couple of months before conception is planned and three months into pregnancy to minimize the risk of spinal issues and it's probably the thing that is front of mind if you're planning conception. I remember taking folic acid throughout my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I took one capsule a day. Is that enough? Yes, 0.5 milligram. Half a milligram is the accepted dose. Now, if you have a family history of spinal issues mm. or if you're taking certain medications, Rachel, then it's worth getting advice and you'll be given advice on whether that dose needs to be different. And it's also, of course, a really great time to eat foods that are rich in folic and folic acid including legumes like beans, uh, peas, lentils, leafy greens, vegetables of course, bananas and avocado are great. Yeah. Are there any other key nutrients that women need throughout the pregnancy journey? Yes uh, there are and calcium and iron and iodine along mm. with folate. So these four are really the, the most important ones that we look at. And mums need these extra um, ingredients, particularly iron because you're supporting the blood circulation of a developing fetus. Mm. So as you said, um, lean meat, very important for iron sources. Mm -hmm. And from the other things, legumes give you the, and give you the, the dairy free versions of calcium, green leafy vegetables mm -hmm. as well. 
fish we look at for iodine support so all of those things come in and very important to understand how each of those is intertwined and the vitamin C as well vitamin C helps iron absorption everything so, <laughs> and it's like a stack of cards one builds on the other yeah it's really great advice um, any other ways that we as women can add to our diet you know food alone is one thing that's great food is very important but there are supplements available where those four nutrients are together mm -hmm. and that's probably the easiest way to look at it and then you're ensuring with some advice that you're getting the best options all the way through okay now during both of my pregnancies I suffered big time with morning sickness mm. up until about 16 weeks now the thought of leafy greens and supplements <laughs> made me want to puke what yes. advice do you give to women there's lots of and, and that's often the case so with some of the formulations particularly in powder form so mm. you don't have to worry about swallowing a tablet they will have added ginger which is good for nausea and b6 which is good for nausea so some of the early supplements will contain those extra nutrients to help settle particularly morning sickness which can be quite debilitating and after bubby's born then it's a whole new set of circumstances isn't it you're supporting breastfeeding you're supporting a mum who's recovering mm. her vitality and her wellness and and her shape so all of those things are important and then there's the those formulations for the breastfeeding mum it's really good news and the other key message for expectant mums is to take it easy on yourself take time out for yourself try not to worry um, and of course having a supportive partner really helps and after the break we are actually going to meet one of the best he's an incredible dad who's taking the stress out of the daily school run and he'll be sharing his lunchbox hacks right after this you don't want to miss it Welcome back, eating a big bowl of kale, pumping some iron and getting your beauty sleep. That's how we roll here at the House of Wellness, isn't that right, Gerald? Well, yeah, look, it is. It is, Heinzy, what, whatever you say about that. But now, I, what have you got in the, the way flow? of minerals to help us kind of on our way? I want to talk about mighty magnesium, Oof. mighty Gerald, Oh. Meeny, 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 look. You are one step away from being an Avenger. One Go of, on. One of the most important minerals in our body, but sadly, about a third of us don't have enough magnesium. But why is it so important? It's involved in about 300 biochemical reactions, so making enzymes, helping muscles work, helping bones be strong, all of those things involve adequate levels in your bloodstream of magnesium. And it's not stored in the blood, very little stored in the blood, mostly stored in bones and in the cells within our muscles. How do we know when we're lacking in magnesium? Usually you're fine, you sleep poorly, yep. so you're a little bit stressed, a bit tense around the shoulders, yep. cr cramps, I know you like that all the time. <laughs> Cramps and spasms, often an eye twitch, yeah. little little hints I just like had that. An eye twitch before. I'm not surprised, no. but that means that you need some magnesium. Yeah, and it's very important that those little triggers you don't ignore. All right, so I need magnesium. Mm -hmm. I love chocolate. Mm -hmm. I believe that chocolate is a good source of magnesium, and yes. you love chocolate baths. Yes, I do. So. Yes, or more Joe, but nuts are the main source of magnesium. So food source of magnesium is nuts. Yeah, but if you want, you can coat them with chocolate, with the dark chocolate. Okay, chocolate. Cashews, so a macadamia almonds. nut coated in raw cacao. You're getting the best of both worlds. Okay, fantastic. So what are the things that taking magnesium regularly is going to do for me? The important thing is it will help you sleep better. Yep. It will reduce, and we all have tension in our shoulders from driving a car, looking on a screen, mm -hmm. working with Luke Relax. Hines. All these things Relax. can actually cause tension in your shoulders. Yeah. Magnesium settles that. So it's the sort of thing you can regularly have. But if you're looking at cramps and spasms, they're usually the first triggers. It's important also to look at a type of magnesium yep. that is available to your body. And I tend to suggest always powder form because it okay. just dissolves and has the other cofactors in it. I was going to say cofactors. There's mm -hmm. some other things we've got to be having to make sure that we are absorbing the magnesium, correct? Not so much if it's in liquid form, in the soluble form, because yep. it's, it's available. But you can often find good formulations with some calcium and a few other, some zinc, and that's usually, they all work together. But magnesium is the trigger but look if what you do don't try and work it out yourself you get some advice from your healthcare practitioner and they will guide you as to the best option all right well i know what i need today thanks gerald so once <laughs> again eating well listening to what our body is telling us and understanding what can help supplement our health is key the a to z of vitamins is brought to you by swiss australia's number one brand of vitamins and supplements
when it comes to a nutritional powerhouse, Rach, you cannot beat vegetables. <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, this might sound weird, but nothing makes me happier than sitting on my couch with a bowl of Brussels sprouts cooked in butter. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if you, you feel You need to get out more, clearly. <laughs> that's <laughs> no, that's so... my worst nightmare as a kid. <laughs> I, I love vegetables. Yes. I mean, of course, vitamins, minerals, lots of fibre. But let's face it, it is difficult to get our kids to eat a variety of vegetables. It is really hard. And I think that's partly because they kind of aren't... They don't visually appealing for our children but also I think it comes from us as parents mm. and for myself I only grew up basically with potatoes, peas, carrots that that's it, it. Mm. so when I go into a green grocer <laughs> and I look at celeriac and eggplant and I don't know how to prepare it to make it look appealing for my daughter like she looks at eggplant she's like that's just sludge I'm like I know babe I don't know what to do with that <laughs> so we need help with that as parents it's the education and the knowledge mm. It's actually easier to make veggies sexier than you think, Rach. All you need is a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper and a bit of spice in your life. Sure, Heinzy. <laughs> Well, potatoes and squash are fairly yeah, strange-looking uh, vegetables. Well, I'm with you. I mean, it's got to look uh, appealing to kids to, uh, to get them to eat it. Yeah, I like to make little faces on the plate for my daughter with carrots and peas and all that sort of stuff. And, and it is no wonder parents are, are having difficulty getting these vegetables in their kids with conversations like what we're having today. <laughs> but it is possible. Thinking outside the box can result in some amazing and appetising creations. What are we having, girls? Um, same as always, we're very free to have another apple. Apple? Kiki, do you want a pear? Mm, probably same as not apple. On social media, people sort of refer to me as the school lunchbox dad or that dad, um, so, or George, which is my real name. Strawberries. <laughs> For father of two, George, this all started one morning three years ago. So I used to get up and go to work before anyone would wake up. And one morning, I was actually off six, so I had a sleep in, and there was a commotion in the kitchen, so I run down in the kitchen, and I'm like to my wife, what's this? What's going on? And she's like, what are you talking about? This is normal. Some margarine and some roast chicken. You know, what can I do to, to stop this? You know, how can we fix this? And she said, well, if you could do lunches, it will take the pressure off. So now I get up a little bit earlier, and I do lunches. So that's how it started. With lunchbox duty now George's domain, he went in search of ideas. So I started looking online for some inspiration, but I found it was either too technical, too many nutritional facts, or something that's just out of reach, like you'd see some panda bears made with rare rice, with seaweed as clothes and rare tropical fruit as eyes. So I, um, I stopped looking and I started creating. What should we do? What sort of sandwiches do you want? Do you want mm. dumplings, ravioli, spring roll? Dumplings. Dumplings? Spring witch. Done. Let's do this. George has come up with many of his own creative ideas when it comes to sandwiches. Spring witch done. It's a cross between a sandwich and a spring roll. So we call it spring witch. We've got chicken, shredded chicken and cheese and butter. We fold over the edges and pop it in. Now there's lunchbox. It's bite size and fun to eat. With his creations becoming a hit at his daughter's school, one parent suggested he should post them on Instagram. So I didn't know what Instagram was. So I looked it up and I posted. You know, I did one, two, and then within a few months, there was like you know, a few thousand followers. Nowadays, George has over 100,000 followers on his socials with not only his lunchbox ideas, but also his one minute dad hack videos. Just under one cup of milk, quarter of a cup of vegetable oil, crack open an egg, and a cup of self-raising flour. Pop them in the oven for 20 minutes on 170. Look how delicious. Keep bring it back. So how does George make sure that Anella and Kiara eat everything in their lunchboxes? By getting them involved in part of the whole process, so like I take them shopping with me, they pick their own fruit and veggies, so I don't do any of that for them, they do it for themselves. Then it's up to me to use those ingredients and, and, and create something with them. So therefore when I make something, they're more likely to try it and, um, and appreciate it. And what are Anella and Kiara's favourite creations of their dads? I like it when he gives us pizza scrolls. Dad's homemade croissants. Yeah, they're really good. Mm -hmm. The popularity of George's creations have now led to bigger things. 
I've been fortunate to be associated and affiliated with some awesome people. Uh, Stuck On You is one of them, I'm their brand ambassador. And another company I'm affiliated with is Jamie Oliver Learn Your Fruit and Veg, so I'm their brand ambassador here in Australia, which is just mind blowing because like, I love that dude, he's so cool. Uh, I've got a book coming out, I still can't get my head around it, like I just figured out how to spell author, so I'm pretty stoked with that. I can't come to terms with it because ultimately I make pretty lunches for my girls to keep them healthy and you know I've got some tips and tricks that I use but the fact that others have recognised that, yeah I can't get my head around it but it's cool, <laughs> I love it. How cool is that? <laughs> He's the lunchbox dad, he's pretty cool isn't he? We're going to catch up with George right after the break here on House of Wellness. Welcome back. Before the break, we met our hands-on dad who's kicking goals big time, Heinzie, when it comes to feeding his two daughters. Totally. He's with us now, George Georgievsky. Mate, what a great job you're doing. The daily lunchbox grind is a, a big challenge for most uh, people. Uh, but as a dad, how did you come up with this idea? Well, basically, I um, started a few years back with um, trying to help out at home. There was all this commotion in the morning and I, I decided to, uh, to do my bit and lunches was the start. And so three years later, here I am creating some... Um, these types of nutritional lunches. I think what I really love is that your philosophy is sugar and wrapper free. How did you go getting uh, your kids onto that? Yeah, uh, initially I thought, okay, it's not going to be easy, yep. um, but they were not really, like as parents, I, I'd look after them like from a younger age as well, so I wouldn't necessarily give it to them. So uh, like the sugar and the, and the treats, so they'd get it as a form of a, as a, as a rare, treat I don't like to call it treat but I like as a rare junk food yeah so um, it was easier to like uh, you know not have as much in a lunchbox to start with and then speaking of the lunchbox can we just have a little bit of a look at this this is quite intricate I've got to say you've got mapped out here what should go in each compartment do we have to stick to this or can we be quite flexible uh, when we're you doing can, it? you can be flexible and what I like like me being a dad I like things simple and laid out for me because I always forget so what I love is that each department uh, compartment I should say you got your protein fruit veggies dairy yeah. grains and you just can't help but put something in each compartment yeah and uh, it makes it easier certainly for packing lunches for me anyway it did and now uh, um, yeah you can take it to whatever you can take it to the next level I've got to ask about school drop-off now you're a bit of a celeb these days but how do you go you're an insta star right you got all these followers have you got mums drooling over you at the gate uh, I I don't really notice um, oh, I've, only, on, got, I've only got eyes for my gorgeous no, wife no need to be humble here no George. need come yeah, on not the way they do it to us too got, it's okay, okay. <laughs> well I was wondering no not at all uh, I to be honest I've only got eyes for my wife because she's a stunner so I'm, yeah. I'm really lucky that I have her looking uh, at me and I believe you've also got eyes for a gentleman called Jamie Oliver you guys I love have done Jamie some work Oliver. together yeah well I recently got asked to do to be the ambassador in Australia for Jamie Oliver Learn Your Fruit and Veg which is an amazing program that gets rolled out in school so I get the uh, the honour of travelling around like the Westfields around Australia doing some high fives some demos and um, I still get freaked out by it so yeah. I'm very fortunate to be part of the amazing program. Inadequate. This well, is yeah, pretty incredible. Time, uh, when my wife Beck is away straight to the tuck shop for me <laughs> to <her> no <laughs> capability but you've inspired me that is a, it's a it's a piece of art almost you must be uh, very proud of what you're doing. Yeah I love it I mean it started off simple um, like wife and I would go to a restaurant and normally you look at the menu and there's only three kids options mm. like, like your, your typical uh, nuggets and chips and the and the, and the pizza yeah. so I thought why don't I reverse that wouldn't it be cool to go to a restaurant that would have like only three options for adults and all these amazing options for kids so I felt that I could do my bit so I got inspired by adult food hence your DIY tacos so yep. for kids for school um, like beautiful use of the you know, colors like the rainbow is a big source of inspiration for me yeah. and also the number five so when I pack lunches I use the number five so three veggies and two fruits I've got to ask, what do you do with the leftover crusts? Leftover crusts, I've got a heap of other creations that I, I use it with. So firstly, I either throw them in the freezer for later use, like um, croutons or breadcrumbs. I which you were going to say a crust icy pole, but yeah, you might no, go on. Actually, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> so um, what I do, that's the obvious one. Otherwise, I've got a heap of other creations. Like I make, um, believe it or not, like banana bread using crusts, leftover crusts. And I understand, George, it's your two daughters yep. who film a lot of uh, the content. <laughs> uh, they're budding young stars as well. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I, I get him involved as much as possible so whether it's um, when it comes to the food in this little lunchbox school lunchbox journey I'll try and get them involved as much as possible. Oh, do you have a look at this uh, it's very cute the two girls. Dad I was wondering can I have three last time I had it I was 
I was still really hungry. Can I have three? I'll give you three. Yeah. Don't say I was really, really, really hungry. Like, just, just say whatever you want to say, but just say, can I have a third one or a three? Sorry, I just tried to put right. some acting into it. Oh, oh, let's do it. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I, I awesome. love the feedback you get from your daughter. I've got a 14-year-old yeah. daughter. I get plenty of feedback. From hey, before we go, I noticed a chest piece uh, on your forearm there. Is there yeah. any story behind that one, George? Yeah, uh, ooh, a quick summary. I don't know if you've got tissues, but a quick summary is... Um, uh, as a young kid, my dad taught me to play chess and uh, I didn't really enjoy it, to be honest, but we weren't allowed to make a move um, straight one after another, so we had to think about it. So fast forward, first few years, the uh, day before he passed, he basically said to me, remember that chess game? It was all about protecting your queen. She's the most important part. Hmm. And the queen could be your mum, your sister, one day your wife, one day you might have daughters. And um, so I'm basically thinking ahead, protecting my queen, because the king can only do one thing at a time on a chessboard. The queen does everything. And that's a representation of life in general with me, anyway, with my girl. So that's an inspiration to him. And that's his driver's licence signature that I had scanned from his licence. And that's their photo. So that's a reminder that, to, you know, I believe in love. And you it's are as hippie a as it good sounds. soul. You're a great soul. Your book's going to be incredible in July. It's very powerful. I'm stoked. It, he's an inspiration, uh, George. There's a fair few tears going around yeah. behind the scenes, if I can say that for sure. Powerful message. Thanks for joining us. And keep uh, those lunchbox ideas coming. Very inspiring. Great to meet George. Up next, the dogs are at it again. The canines that are keeping families together on the House of Wellness. Today, we're getting our day off to a great start with these protein-packed breakfast bowls topped with a crunchy, grain-free granola. Let's start by mixing together slithered almonds, chopped macadamias, pumpkin and sunflower seeds, and coconut. Stir together honey or maple syrup with a little coconut oil and pour it all over. This goes onto a tray and into the oven for about 15 minutes. While that's getting toasty, we'll add our favourite fruits and some natural yoghurt to the blender, along with a scoop of vanilla-flavoured BioGlan probiotic breakfast smoothie. It's full of plant protein, fibre and probiotics to aid digestion and fuel your day. Simply spoon the yoghurt and fruit base into a bowl or jar and top with the crunchy grain-free granola. Settle in at home or pack it all up and you're good to go. Have a great day. Welcome back to the House of Wellness. So fair to say, all of us here on the couch love our dogs, Jo, and you've just got Aww. a new member of the family, haven't you? Yes, we have a four-and-a-half-month-old lab, Daisy, who Aww. has become my shadow everywhere I go <laughs> yep. in the house because I do a lot of work at home on my laptop. Everywhere I go, she sits at my feet, just sort of, you know when they lean in to you? Yeah, it's yeah. so gorgeous. And it means that you forgive anything, even when she's chewed our subwoofer. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh, my gosh. Subwoofer <laughs> oh. has not survived. It's the a new woofer. Do you get it? It's a woofer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No pun intended. It's a love-hate relationship, isn't it? I've got a gorgeous um, golden English cocker spaniel. He's named Simba because he genuinely looks like Simba Aww. from The Lion King. And his hobbies include chasing birds and sleeping with his ball so nobody steals it. And he's just... <laughs> what going to say. Sorry. <laughs> He's our best friend. It's so cute. We've got a staffie oh. called Dennis, who I think is man's uh, best friend, or woman's yes. best friend in your case, uh, Joe. We're finding out constantly more about dogs and what they can do. This is a great story. Take a look. <laughs> Benjamin Jenner is eight years old and has autism. For his parents, Colin and Simone, Managing simple tasks with him has been a struggle. And then we'll go to the park, OK? That is, until Harvey came into their lives. On this one. Before we had Harvey, we couldn't go out anywhere as a family at all. We couldn't take Benjamin out anywhere because he would run away. You ready to go? Harvey, let's walk. Let's go. Straight on. Harvey is not only Benjamin's best buddy, he's settled him in a way his parents couldn't bringing harmony back into the family. It enables us to, to take him out into the community, to go and do things that otherwise you take for granted, just going to the supermarket, going to the shops, going and getting a haircut. Who's that? 
No, it's not. Who's that? Hey, guys, how are you? Steady, please. How are you going? Five. How you doing, Benjamin? Steady, please. Hi. Dogs like Harvey are the brainchild of former guide dog trainer Katie Hunter, who saw a need for specially trained dogs to help children with autism. Well, Harvey looks in great condition. Some of our dogs are trained to anchor a child, so a child who's in flight mode or scared out and about away from the house, if they're going to run away or be in danger, our dogs will lay down and anchor them. So as soon as Benjamin tries to run, Harvey anchors himself by laying down to the ground and Benjamin physically cannot run away. Each of the dogs are tailor trained to suit the needs of every child and no task is too hard. Some of our dogs can pull the covers off their kids to get them out of bed in the morning for school when obviously if mum did it, there'd be a bit of a problem. Some of our dogs will help children brush their teeth, get their hair brushed. All those daily things are a little bit challenging for a lot of families with kids with disabilities. So the sky's the limit and the imagination is the best part of the job in what we can teach a dog to do. Let's go up this aisle here. It's quite amazing the, what he's done for our son. Did you want some other fruit? teachers at his school had asked us okay. what had changed at home because they'd noticed uh, significant reductions in, in his anxiety to the point where he, previously he would spend most of the, the session pacing the back of the room and they had trouble getting him to focus on a task. Once Harvey was living with us, they found that he would sit at the table and complete tasks and do schoolwork with very little prompting or intervention from them. <laughs> Before Erwin joined our family, life was quite stressful. Oliver had a lot of anxiety, he was having trouble sleeping. He would have meltdowns and he really struggled on a day-to-day -day basis. Erwin, come on. At the age of four and a half, Ollie was diagnosed with autism. Oliver and George. But that was before Erwin. Oliver said sorry and so did George. So once Erwin arrived with our family, Oliver straight away responded really well. He slept through for the first night once Erwin had joined us. And then after that, his anxiety levels day on day just continued to decrease to the point where he really doesn't seem to have too many troubles at all anymore. In just three years, Ollie's gone from an anxious toddler with no communication. Good boy! To a happy, confident child. When I first met him, he wouldn't look at me, he wouldn't talk to me during our interview process. He kind of just stayed on the peripheral side watching what happened and you know, I could see that he really wanted to, but there was just something holding him back from that developing that speech and wanting to engage. And, and often that's a friendship and that unconditional love and companionship. Yeah, that's on. it, Chum, you've got it. Come on. So powerful hearing a first word being said. You know, I remember one of the children I worked with hadn't started speaking yet. His first word was dog. Um, I pity the parents on that one, but, um, you know, I'll take the first word. Ellen, come on. Dogs for Kids with Disabilities has been going for seven years and has placed over 70 dogs with children with special needs. I think Katie is amazing. She is a hero to us. She has changed our lives and she changes the lives of so many children who do have difficulties. And um, I think that what she does and what her team does is just beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. Harvey, come on. Hello. Hero's a word that I think it gets used a fair bit, uh, perhaps over overused sometimes. But when somebody provides something for you that changes your whole family for the better, I think it's an apt description of, of Katie. To our family, she is absolutely a hero. Yeah, another brilliant story on the House of Wellness. And right after this, you're going to meet Katie Hunter, the brains behind the outfit. Uh, welcome back to the House of Wellness. Before the break, we met two families and their wonderful support dogs who help kids through the challenges of autism. Harvey and Erwin were two puppies trained and housed through Dogs for Kids with Disabilities. Here with us now, Katie Hunter, who started the program. You brought along an absolute beauty in Matt. Katie, yes. congratulations. It's a great thing you're doing. Thank you so much. It's, um, it's a love job. I love getting up every morning and going to work, so I think that's a pretty special thing to be able to do. Katie, I have to say, I'm just reeling from the fact that you can train a Labrador to get 
a child out of bed to help that child clean his teeth. I can't train my dog <laughs> not to eat the subwoofer. Um, <laughs> so, so what else have you been able to train these incredible animals to do? Um, lots of different things. They often do tricks to engage their kids. They might be roll over, it might be beg, high five, crawl along the ground, go up and down slides like you saw Erwin doing on the footage is a really popular one with our kids. Mm. But really whatever a family comes to us with and wants dog trained for, we're going to give it a go. So mm. you started working with guide dogs initially. How different is the training for people with autism or other similar conditions? I think uh, the main difference is the emotional connection and the emotional workload for these guys. So they learn to indicate anxiety and they can tell when their children are going to have a meltdown, often before the meltdown happens as well. So some of them can even tell when a child's temperature is raising, rising before the temp is taken. Wow. So, and it must be such an incredible feeling seeing these dogs make such a difference in these kids' life. It's an amazing feeling. It takes two years to get that feeling, which is always a bit tough. Wow. But um, it is the best feeling in the world. So two years worth of training, it's obviously an expensive operation. Yeah. Is there a way we can contribute? Um, definitely to donate via our website. Yeah. So that's dkd.org.au. Yeah. We'll put all those details up on the houseofwellness.com yeah. as well, Katie. You're doing an incredible job making a difference to so many people. People's lives. Thanks for coming in and sharing your story with us uh, today. We really appreciate it. And thanks, Mac. Yeah. 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 As I said, uh, go to the House of Wellness oh. website, houseofwellness.com.au. More information on today's show. You can find out more about Mac and Katie's programs. Don't forget to tune into the House of Wellness radio show every Sunday. And as always, thanks to our very good friends at Chemist Warehouse. We'll see you next time. I've got the high five down, Pat. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, it's huge. Oh. So beautiful. Wow. Oh, he's a big boy. Every time.